Aloha and welcome to this week's edition of Business in Hawaii. I'm Daylan Yanagita and we're broadcasting live from the ThinkTech studios in downtown Honolulu. If you want to tune in live, we are at www.thinktechhawaii.com and you may also subscribe to our programs and get on our mailing list at that site as well. The theme of Business in Hawaii is to share with you stories of local businesses by local people. And our guests share with us how they build successes and contribute to our growing communities. In in the Think Tech studio today is Jeanette Kojane, Executive Director of Kokua Mao. Jeanette, welcome to the show. Thank you now, very much. I'm glad I didn't ruin the name. <laughs> <laughs> it could have a Japanese influence, but I understand that it's, it's Kojane. Um, but I'm really pleased that you joined us today, and I, I wanted to thank you for taking the time. Well, thank you for inviting us. My pleasure. I want to start our segment by um, sharing with the audience a little bit about yourself. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, as, I, as you said, Jeanette Kojane, and I am the executive director of Kukua Mao. And I have lived in Hawaii for about 23 years. I came here to get my master's in public health. So I am a health person. I, I've been involved with the, this field for over 30 years. So I, I went back east and got my uh, undergraduate at Cornell and then moved back to California where I'm from outside of San Francisco and then um, actually worked in San Francisco in the middle of the AIDS crisis. For about five years, I did a lot of international work and uh, that's where I first came in contact with health and health issues and caring for people with serious illness. And really this question of how are we building a community where people are well cared for? How are we supporting people with serious illness? How are we supporting their loved ones? And how, how are we as a community coming together to care well for people? So, you know, fortunately we don't have that crisis um, in the same way, but I find, um, you know, here in Hawaii, we really have just such an excellent opportunity to be building those systems and support systems strengthening those natural systems that we already have. So, so for me, the work with Kokua Mao has really been just so rewarding and um, continues to be something that I really, I just am so grateful that I'm involved with this, uh, with this work. And I think that with your passion for, for healthcare and for assisting those with serious illnesses, um, it really, blends in well with our culture because we do know that very commonly we have extended families here in Hawaii that are living together and generations mm -hmm. taking care of one another well into um, their, their prime years. And so clearly um, you're in a community that really, really needs your message and really needs your help. Um, I'd love to first of all ask you, where do you find passion in your, in your work? I, I know that um, dealing in serious illness, a lot of times those are not happy topics, but I can tell that you have passion for the message that you deliver, and I'd love to hear about where your passion for that comes from. You know, it's, it's a really good question because I, you know, I'm not going to lie that it's easy. Um, but I, I've been involved with this for all, over 30 years, this topic, and I am continually reminded of the importance of having good information and feeling supported and knowing where to go for help. So I'm all about asking for help, you know, no shame in asking for help. And I really see, um, again, in my personal life, my professional life, the importance of getting good information, understanding I really like the expression, you don't know what you don't know. We don't know what we don't know. And we hopefully are learning all the time. Oh, that's not my field. Oh my goodness, I need to learn about that. And it's also the other reality is that people may have gone through serious illness with one person and that's then their reality. Not to say that's not their reality, but we, there's a lot of good information. There's other ways of doing it and people may not appreciate that there are systems. And there's also an appreciation that we are really working on this. So things, there are a lot of things that are better than they were five years ago, 10 years ago. So I really see that this information and how Kukua Mao approaches this is really, is the, is the Ohana family approach. Mm -hmm. How do we as professionals in our community, how do we as interested people 
help other people. And really one of our approaches is to go in front of other people. We like to go where we're invited. And that for me makes such a huge difference. And in our community in Hawaii, that's, that's what we're about, right? So we are invited in around the community. And I just feel so fortunate that churches and temples, workplaces, community groups, all sorts of people step up and say, you know, this information is really important. I want to know more about this. And that for me is what really makes the difference is people who are not only willing to ask questions, but listen and admit that, oh my goodness, I need to learn more about this. And I find that when people are in the middle of it or they're sort of, they're looking at this, they're, oh my goodness, Jeanette, I need your information. How do I get more about from Kokua Mao? Can you help me with this? And certainly those personal stories. I really started, um, I think the biggest in input was my mother. My mother was at work one day and she had a seizure. And that's when they di diagnosed a brain tumor. She was still a working person. She was very fit. It was totally out of the blue. And fortunately, she worked for Stanford University, super bent. They were very, very supportive of her, of our family. But I was so involved with how are we caring for her? How are we caring for her? How is she getting the best care possible? How is she having quality of life throughout her life? How are we supporting my dad? Can't even boil water, right? How are we figuring out whether or not we have the best care for her? And that's really what carries me through, that my mother had um, two years beyond what was diagnosed. And so, you know, we're very thankful for that. And I can look back and say, you know, as the eldest daughter, I was a good, dutiful daughter. I did the right thing. My mother died, but I, we cared well for her. And I feel really strongly about that, the fact that we were able to do that. And I know other people are able to do that. So that's really one of the main impetuses for Kukua Mao and is, is that experience with me. So Kukua Mao is a network. We are a network of organizations and individuals here in Hawaii. We're going on 20 years. This is our 20th year. And there are very few other states that have something like this. But for those of us in Hawaii, it's not really surprising that we are a hui because we all take care of each other. We know each other, we're concerned about this, and we want to live in a community where people are well cared for. So we actually, you know, this is a, this is a community effort. So we're a membership organization, so health plans, health systems, hospices, long-term care, government agencies, as well as individuals support this work so that good information and resources are available in the community. So we like to think of ourselves as a movement to improve care. And I really like that terminology because in a movement, everybody has a role to play. Everybody has something to contribute. You know, clearly clinicians can do certain things, but you're supporting your next door neighbor is another really important part of this. So I see that we all need to be together in this to, to really confront what is a very difficult situation. So Kukua Mao, we have three approaches. So I will admit I am a public health person, proud graduate of UH, and I like to think in a systems approach. How are we going to do this? So we think, first of all, we put people at the center of our work. How do we help people who may be facing serious illness understand decisions they may need to make? And then what are the resources and information that's available here to help people get that quality of life? How do we help the person? How do we help their caregivers? What do we do? So I really encourage people to go to kukuamau.org. Excellent resources used across the state, even stuff in 10 languages. Really good information that's out there. So, and we also have a speakers bureau. We call it our ambassador program or the Let's Talk Story program. So we like to go where people work, live, and pray. So, and you know, pray the last one. We did 52 talks last year, most of those in faith communities. We're having a big, we had a big collaboration with the Hong Pa Hong Anji movement. We've done a number of things in Christian churches. We work with the Jewish community, and now we're launching a large work uh, with the Catholics. It's just so interesting how many people have these issues. And if you're brave enough to listen, to ask good questions, to listen, and to be there, 
really how much dialogue can happen and how much suffering we can help to address or prevent. It's a topic that used to be the norm in our communities. We used to all be there for each other, and now it's, it's not. And for us, if we can make these conversations the norm, if that can, it is so much a part of our culture to be concerned about each other. You know, for us, it's really just, it's very natural. So first thing we do is put the people at the middle, visit our website, lots of good information. The second thing is we like to train professionals. So we have a lot of education and networking opportunities. We have a new, free newsletter, join our newsletter, trainings that are happening. We have monthly events. How do we not only educate people, but network? Because it's not easy, our work. Um, and then the third thing we do is policy and systems change, systems transformation. So for us, we look at policy like on a statewide level, but also with companies. How are you approaching this? How can you build caregiver support into the work, into the support that you're giving for people? Because we know how difficult that is. So we like to approach it from different perspectives. Again, as a movement, there's, there's things that we can be doing. And even just bringing up the topic, acknowledging that this is important, you know, leaning in is a business term now, right? If we can lean into this topic, we really can address a lot of the suffering that's going on and be helping people to, to really be, to be, be recognizing, wait, there are things we can do ahead of time. And if we're in a crisis, don't worry, there's also people out there to, uh, to help. Now, how do you coin this topic? I mean, a lot of times people would say, oh, she's talking about end of life. Right. But that's, that's, that's not the scope of it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so, you know, for us, what's really important is to say, there are things you can do ahead of time to be prepared. And, you know, in Hawaii, people love that, right? I want to make this easy for my family. I don't want to be a burden. Unfortunately, we hear that. Oh, I don't want to be a burden to my family. I don't want to talk about this. Oh, that's just going to stress them out. This is, these conversations are a gift to your family because you can talk about things in advance. So we try and move these conversations upstream. How do we have these conversations earlier? So the technical term is advanced care planning. Uh, Forbes magazine says everybody should have an advanced directive. So advanced care planning, planning in advance for your care, does include, for instance, the document that's an advanced directive. So an advanced directive is for you to determine ahead of time, if you can't speak for yourself, who would speak for you? And a lot of people think, oh, it doesn't really matter. It matters a lot. And unfortunately, I have a lot of stories of people who say, you know, you came last week and I sort of paid attention. Seriously, I had a guy on, on the cell phone. I don't even got my cell phone. I'm in the emergency room. My uncle had a fall. What was I supposed to do? So I like to say, you know, better 10 years too early than 10 minutes too late. Do these things early, document your wishes, and you get to choose. I still remember this older woman who said, oh, you know, I have four kids. Two of them are useless. You mean I get to choose the two good kids? I said, you get to choose the two good kids. And then what would you like? And it's a chance for you to share your values, your wishes. And those kind of conversations, we don't have them a lot. We're busy. What's important? What's a good day for you? And I got to say, for me as a person, doing this with our friends, what's a good day? You know, those days when just, wow, I am just lucky to live in Hawaii. I am so fortunate for all the things that I have. How do we have more of those kind of days? Right. You know, um, advanced planning discussions doesn't discriminate based on age. A lot of people would think that it's an it's an old person's topic. Yes. And we know that it's not. Um, we are going to go to a short break. But when we come back, I want to talk about that because there are some very striking statistics about young people dealing with very real issues. Um, but before we go to break, I want to flash up your information just so that folks know how to get in touch with you. We have a slide with um, Kakua Mao's um, website and how to get in touch with you. That's Jeanette Kojain, Executive Director of Kakua Mao. We are going to take that short break. This is Business in Hawaii. We'll see you back here shortly. Aloha. I'm Keisha King, host of At the Crossroads, where we have conversations that are real and relevant. We have spoken with community leaders from 
right here locally in Hawaii and all around the world. Won't you join us on thinktechhawaii.com or on YouTube on the ThinkTech Hawaii channel. Our conversations are real, relevant, and lots of fun. I'll see you at the crossroads. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Winston Welch, host of Out and About. It's a show that we have every other Monday on Think Tech Live here. We explore a variety of topics that are really interesting. We explore organizations, events, and the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. We've got some amazing guests on here, like all the shows at Think Tech. So if you want to catch up on stuff, tune into my show every other Monday and other shows here on Think Tech Live. It's a great place to learn about stuff, to be informed, and uh, if you have some ideas, come on my show. Let's talk about it. See you later, and aloha. Welcome back. This is Business in Hawaii. Jeanette Kojane, Director of Ku Executive Director of Kukua Mao, is with us in the studio today. And Jeanette, when we left to break, we were talking about advanced care planning and how it's not a conversation that's reserved for just aging people, but really it's a conversation, a planning, an experience that should be had by people of all ages. Um, and I know that there are some striking statistics about young people, employees who are caregivers while they're working full time. And I'd love for you to talk to that. Yep. So for us, we actually have seen that, I mentioned before that we've been doing talks out in the community, and we like the phrase where people work, live, and pray. And we've really seen, you know, caregivers, people may not even identify as being caregivers because it's what they do. They care for their spouse, they're caring for their grandparents, they care for their in-laws. They're taking Uncle Kimo to the doctor twice a month. They stop by every weekend, make sure that he's fed. These caregivers are just such a crucial part of our community. And, you know, most people are still going to work. And where would they get information? And I have so many people who, you know, as you say, the sandwich generation, right? Drop the kids at school, drop mom at daycare, go to, go to work, then reverse. Go pick them up, take everybody home, make dinner, take care of mom, fall into bed, and repeat. Like, where would they get information? So we, that's, again, why we like to go out. And I think, you know, it's absolutely right that caregivers have a tremendous burden. And uh, these are integral parts of our community. And for people who, you know, employees, we, employers know this, although they may not know it. It's really good to, to ask. So we see that the people are spending, they estimate at least 20 hours a week on caregiving. About They estimate nationally that 20% of people are caregivers, and I actually think that's pretty low for Hawaii because we're also, we take, we, you know, we have a ohana system. People are there. They're helping each other out. It, it is a big, it's a big burden. And then the cost is tremendous, especially when you don't have things in place, right? So, you know, people estimate $7,000 a year. Quite frankly, frankly, for Hawaii, that's low. That is low. How are you going to, to make all of this happen? So we see for employers, and that's why we really started this worksite wellness program, that you have several things. The employees are totally stressed out. They may be retiring early. They may be quitting. They may be at their desk but not able to function. Either they're trying to solve a problem or just the stress of this. Um, you know, it's really, it's big. One statistic that I find shocking, in Hawaii, people who are caring for someone with dementia, 50% of those people end up in the emergency room for themselves. It's we have a, a tremendous one sheet burden. of your statistics yeah. that I would love to share. Um, if we could put that up. Mm. You know, and this is really important. It, sometimes people say, oh, it's just a women's issue. Well, first no. of all, women are people. But men and women do this together. There are a lot of men and women who are doing this. This is everybody is impacted by this. And I find it so interesting that, you know, the estimate how many millennials are doing this, whether, again, it's for their grandparents or for somebody else. So they may be going online, but how do you get good information? How do you make sure that they've gotten good information? 
And coming from myself, coming from the human resources industry, um, we do know that there's a huge problem with presenteeism, that we have employees that are, are working for us, but are we really getting mm -hmm. the best work out of them? Because they have these competing priorities. Right. You said 20 hours a week. Well, that means that yeah. they're working a full-time job and a half, yeah. and which means that I'm not really getting 100% of them. Right. Right. We also know that because employees spend so much time at work, that they rely on their employers for the best information. Mm -hmm. For example, we talk to employees about planning for retirement. Mm -hmm. We talk to employees about training and development, yep. Um, yep. higher education, yep. right? And that's where they're getting their information. So it just makes sense yep. that you would come into a wellness market as well to right. start talking about these planning events that need to happen. They're crucial to people's lives. That's right. And so that's why we really hope that people will contact us because we're ready to work with you to make a tailor-made program, something that works for you. You know, and you're, you're right. For me, it's often, it, it, it is sort of a, it's strange. Why is it not a part of what we're doing? So we need to acknowledge that it's not easy. People may not know how to have these conversations. Good news. Who am I was here? And I really hope people will see us as a resource. For us, we have a lot of experience. This is our expertise. This is what we do. We know how to get conversations going, to start conversations, and to foster these, these discussions. So for employers who are thinking, oh my goodness, where do I start? Call us and we can work with you. So for instance, so we have a whole toolkit. And we also have a website, wellness.kukuamau.org, that walks people through the advanced care planning process. So, you know, it's interesting for people who are dealing with this right now, you can get it done and you can do a lot of things very quickly. For other people, okay, you have a little bit of time. Let's be thinking about this. So our wellness, uh, the wellness.kukuamau is an excellent website. And so with our toolkit, we have resources. We have things that we can tailor make to, to help you. So for instance, lunch and learn. We can come in and do a lunch and learn. We can do a series of lunch and learn, introduce the topic, get people thinking, come back again, answer questions. So oftentimes people say, you know, my doctor doesn't have time for this. Yes, that's so let's, we are here. We'll come in, we'll work with you to make that happen. We can do you know, put things to put into your newsletter. You can put stuff on a website. Integrating into a wellness program, we think makes so much sense. Yes, we plan for retirement. This is part of retirement. And I can tell you, unfortunately, by not planning ahead, this can be a very expensive proposition, as well as being super stressful for families. So not appointing an agent, not appointing these people, it's a decision not to do something that, you know, quite frankly, it's not good planning. It's not preparing. We have another ahead. one sheet um, that you shared with us. Mm. Um, and talk a little bit about um, your worksite wellness program. And so this is, these are just some examples, for instance. So, you know, we, again, there are things that you can do. You can create policies. You can be running support groups for caregivers. You can do a number of different things to be supporting caregivers as well as, you know, other, to, to be making a supportive environment. So again, we're really happy to work with people and to see what works. So we don't want people to think, oh, you got to have the full-blown program right away. Let's start simple. Let's start with some lunch and learn, right? We have through our website a lot of good free information. So, um, you know, we can make the materials that are available for you to be, to be there. And we, it's what we do. And we, so we need people who are brave, who are willing to speak up. I'll be honest with you, people that have gone through it themselves understand what this is. And for those organizations who are really leaders in this, like UHA, EUTF, we've worked a lot with them last year. Leaders, you know, who have seen this, um, either because of a good experience or a bad experience, they're, they're really stepping up. And, and so for us, we really see that this is a topic that is super important. So I, I do think it needs to have some leadership uh, to, make this, uh, to make that conversation go. And then we'll work with whichever groups. But 
Coming from leadership, it's, it is really important. We actually just finished shooting a, a short video with Howard Lee from UHA as a president of a health plan talking about why this is really important. So, you know, the, it is really important and it does make a big difference. You really can be, you really can be making an impact. So yes, we want people to take the stairs, lose weight, smoking, mental wellness and support for people is really, really important. And, and again, you know why I do this? I do this because I see over and over again. I had somebody last week who said, you know, I went to your talk at church. My mom came. I invited her to come. We had those conversations. And for the first time since my dad died, we were able to have those conversations. We were able to document better what she wants. We really feel now that we have a good grasp on it. And now she's bringing it up where she never would before. It's, I mean, talk about a stress reduction with tears in his eyes, he's telling me this. So this is, you know, we, you have to be brave, but we just see the results are really powerful. From an employee benefits perspective, you know, one of the things as an employer we always look at are managing our medical utilization because it, you know, oh, translates yeah. to cost. Yeah. And I think that a lot of people don't understand that these critical illnesses um, these events cost a lot of money. Yes. Yes. But if you already have in mind how you want that medical event to be handled, mm -hmm. you essentially, on the back end, are able to manage that risk mm -hmm. in a way by saying, hey, this person doesn't want extraordinary measures mm -hmm. taken, but rather they just want to be comfortable, which of course will cut down time in an emergency room, in ICU, which also translates to cost savings. Yeah. If that's a perspective for business leaders to, to look at as well right. in managing risk. You know, and the cost is really an issue that definitely comes up. I'm always so reassured by businesses who say, you know, what we need is for people to have good care. That's what I want. And we, you know, like the phrase, the right care at the right time mm -hmm. in the right place. Well, that can happen with conversations. But if you're avoiding unnecessary and unwanted treatment, yes, you will be saving money. And you know, for the caregivers too, if the caregivers are being supported, if they're, if they're being supported along the way, you're also saving costs. So I, again, I'm reassured when businesses don't start with the money, but I'm often thinking, wow, you, know, you, you do appreciate Absolutely. that good care and, so, and preventing crisis, preventing this stress, supporting the people, people where they are, that is, that is going to save the money. You know, Jeanette, I knew we could go on yeah. and on and <laughs> on could. about the topic. Unfortunately, we, we have run out of time. I do want to make sure that our viewers are able to see your information one, one last time. Um, your website, wellness.kukuamau.org, for those um, worksite wellness programs your contact information, your, your telephone number, and I'm really encouraging folks to, to reach out. I wanted to thank you for your time. Important message, very important message um, for all of us. Um, we are out of time, but thank you to our guest, Jeanette, for joining us. Huge thank you to the amazing production staff in the studio. If you would like to be a guest on our show, please email your information to shows at thinktechhawaii.com. Business in Hawaii airs every Thursday at 2 p.m. And we are looking forward to seeing you here next week.